All right. Thank you very much, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be out here today. And, uh, you know, today we want to have a little bit of fun, but also talk about a very serious topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about. But it's important that we do talk about it because in this day and age, we need each other more than ever before. You know, we're more connected than ever before with our technology and smartphones and everything else. But at the same time, we're more disconnected and more lonely and more isolated as well. And that brings about a lot of mental health issues, which is what we're going to talk about today. Now, I heard we only have about 40 minutes, so I'm going to squeeze the presentation in. If we have time for questions and answers at the end, we can do that. I'll hang around for a while afterwards. If you don't have to run out to class, you want to talk to me about anything, please feel free to do that as well. Uh, as mentioned, I was a Seattle Supersonic, as uh, you know, these, this was a great team in Seattle. Uh, right, right around the time you guys were born, I think they left. And we hope they all come back one day, and I'll be working with them again and uh, out there helping them to get a good product on the floor and a good team in the town again. And hopefully you guys can make it up to Seattle once in a while and watch, watch them play. We hope in the next two or three years, but we don't know for sure yet, uh, the, the NBA can come back to Seattle. So why don't we advance this slide, and I have a short little video to play, about four or five minutes long. This will tell you some of the things that I went through personally, as far as my mental health, how I worked my way through it, and how I'm still here today to share this very important message with you. Go ahead and play. James Donaldson is a big man, always has been. At seven foot two, he was a big man at Washington State back in the day. For three seasons, he was a big man with the Seattle Supersonics. You know, this is what I grew up to do, and this is what I want to do, and I'm going to try to become as good as I can. He played in the NBA for 14 seasons. One year, he was an all-star. You've got to be tough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and all the rest of the NBA giants. It's just going to be so many people that uh, really, I think, will hopefully be inspired by my story. His story. For 40 years, James has called Seattle home. He started the Donaldson Clinic for Physical Therapy in 1989. It was a success. He had a home in Magnolia, had a wife and a stepson, and money in the bank. Life was good. In 2015, though, he had emergency major open heart surgery. He was in a coma for two weeks and flat on his back for the better part of a year. And life didn't want to let him back up. His heart eventually healed, only to be broken. My mother passed away. My wife walked out on their marriage and took her 12-year-old boy with her, my stepson. My life was just crashing around me. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars I had saved up for my retirement years. I threw it all into my business to keep it going. We had 25 employees. I felt a terrible obligation uh, to them to keep it going as long as I possibly could. The Donaldson Clinic shut down for good in February of 2018. I was alone. I, I was alone. I was scared. And the big man shut down too. He was swallowed up into darkness. You can't think straight. You can't think logically. It just doesn't happen. Your only concern is the immediate time you're in and how to get yourself out of that or how to get yourself out of this world and be done with the misery and the pain and the suffering. I remember my doctor sitting as far as we are from each other telling me, hey, James, if you take your life, people are going to miss you. People love you. People care about you. And I looked right back at him, as serious as can be, and said, Doc, nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Nobody's going to miss me. He considered hanging himself. He considered attacking a cop in hopes of being shot dead. His dark time lasted a year, and then something happened that shook James to the core. You know, I think what was the catalyst for me to for me to be doggedly determined to hang in there and get through this thing was the suicide of Tyler Helinski. 
He watched as people struggled to tell Tyler's story, to understand why, and he decided that he would stay alive to tell his own story. The big man saw a specialist. And he said, wow, James, you are going through depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideations. We need to get you help. He got on medication, and then he called on his friends. I said, hey, guys, if, if I need to call somebody at 2 in the morning, can I call you? And they said, yes. Every one of them put their hand up. Put me on your speed dial. Call me. I said, but I also need you guys to check in on me two or three times a week. Because the only people calling me now are, you know, creditors and bankers and loan sharks and, and people who are after every last dime, which I didn't have anymore. And so, with help, James Donaldson pulled himself back up onto his feet. He is currently dedicating his life to helping other people fight through depression and mental illness. Now I realize, yes, people are really missing that people care about. He talks to kids, tells his story, and sometimes they tell him their stories. And at the end, three or four or five of those kids would come up and pull me aside individually. They'd tug on me, pull me off to the side, and tell me that they're suicidal right now, and they don't know how they're going to make it through the night. James rents an apartment now. His money is gone, but he has found purpose. He started a foundation, yourgiftoflife.org, to further the conversation about mental health and suicide. He's written a book, Celebrating Your Gift of Life, it's called. And in it, he talks about men who notoriously struggle to express themselves when they're hurting. Men just have to say, hey, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay for me to, to be hurt. People see me crying when I tell my story because it's so real and I want people to realize I'm a big, tough, strong guy, I always have been, but many, many, many nights I was crying myself to sleep on my pillow all by myself and that's okay. It takes a big man to tell the story this man tells. And the truth is, through it all, even though we knew he was seven foot two, we had no idea just how big a man James Donaldson really is.